we're going to have a very important lecture actually when we started training Tai Chi the first time. You know, we always talk about Tai Chi, Tai Chi, Tai Chi Quan, the ultimate boxing, the supreme boxing, and we all know that Tai Chi, uh, just Tai Chi, the word alone means the ultimate or the supreme, <clears throat> or the balanced one, the harmony one. So the only time when it's balanced and harmonized is when two things of equal proportion mixed together as one. So that means there's negative force and positive force, or yin and yang, or male and female energy put together, that's harmony. So that's Tai Chi. But what about before Tai Chi? We never thought of that. What is before Tai Chi? <clears throat> before Tai Chi is Wu Ji. Wu Ji. Wu Ji, if I were to define it, there's many ways of defining it. It means from nothingness, from nothing to something. It's like, where were we? So what about the human being? There's got to be nothing over here before, and who is here before? So maybe the universal, or God, whatever you want to call it, or universal power of God. You can say that. So before Tai Chi, there's Wu Ji. Wu Ji means nothingness. There's nothing there. But when we say nothing, it doesn't mean it's weak. It doesn't mean it's totally strong yet. But there's a potential of becoming strong. That's the very important thing. So Wuji is just like the Tai Chi symbol with no yin and yang. It's just one circle by itself with no yin and yang. So it does not distinguish between yin and yang. It just is nothing, nothingness. But it's limitless, limit. There's no limit. It can be potentially be something big or preparing to be something big or getting towards something big. So in our Wu Hao form, the first movement is called Wu Ji Si. That means a Wu Ji position. It's like the beginning part of Tai Chi is going to start. So when I translate the word Wu Ji Si, I could have just said Wu Ji Si, which I did in Chinese. But what do I need to come up with in English? I said nothingness, potentialness. It don't make sense. I mean, so I just say, Beginning of Tai Chi, you know, or Tai Chi begins. Very easy, very simple for the layman, for anybody who wants to know. Oh, so this position is standing there, beginning of Tai Chi. But that position is non movement. Okay. Wu Ji has not moved yet, Tai Chi has moved. So from Wu Ji, to Tai Chi, something has to happen inside there. Something has to happen inside there to begin Tai Chi. So that means the body is not moving, but the mind is going to initiate. Very important. The mind is going to initiate the move. So the mind will have an intention, potentially intended to move based on the way it's supposed to move depending on what kind of Tai Chi you do so so when the mind intentionally for the movement to begin that means the mind direct the body what to do that bring down to the body anatomy and physiology science makes sense without the mind nothing move think about Somebody unconscious. The mind was there, but the body wasn't, the mind wasn't functioning. So if the mind 
is not sending the signal to the body to move. The body will not move. But of course, when we are walking, we are talking, we are eating, we never thought about the mind is telling us what to do. Look at him, I'm doing it. Like he's telling you, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I talk like one. Anyway, so it is the mind. Because if I'm a vegetable, if I'm a mind, I cannot do all this movement. So the mind is very important. We never thought of it when we do action. But in Tai Chi, we do. We intentionally make our mind telling our body what to do, sending a signal, the neuron sending the signal, the brain sending the signal, which is the mind, sending the signals to tell us what to do, tell the body how to do. So the mind intended and the movement begins. As soon as the movement is begin, we distinguish from substantial and insubstantial. We distinguish from softness and firmness. We distinguish from 50% of the weight, 50% of weight, 70% of weight, 30% of So we create Tai Chi. So from Wuji, we create Tai Chi. Okay. Then once Tai Chi begins, as the mind is telling the body what to do, we also have to be conscious about our movement. We have to be aware of our movement. How we are putting our foot, how we are shifting, how we are turning, how we are going from here, how we are going to 12 o'clock, to 10.30, to 1.30. All this gyration is happening. At the same time, we have to keep our presence. Remember our last lecture was about the presence in Wuhan Tai Chi. Please refer to that. So, and about the fall of everything, the angle, the body mechanics. Now all those things are, have to be happening at the same time. So we are very busy. And when we do that, we will be very successful in our movement. Initially, of course, we're practicing it. So first of all, we have to remember the movement. As we get higher level, we become very successful. It's like you start a business. You need to put the money in, you need to plan, you to call for a meeting, you look at the market, you look at social media, you work on it, work on it, work on it over the years, hopefully, you make money. And if you don't make the money, you blame it on the economy or something like that. But for Tai Chi, you always get something. You may not gain, you may not get to the highest level compared to your classmate, but you will get something to your potential of your mind and body, the way you move. So everybody gets something. Nobody gets nothing. Everybody gets something. Okay, so that's a very simple. So Wuji does not have no duality, have no conflict of left and right or whatever. It's just there and nothing. So if you look at this room, it's nothing. There's no air, there's nothing. There's no, see, I cannot touch anything. But there are something. All the stuff are here. Okay? So Wuji has everything that's there, but at the same time, there's nothing there. And it's empty. So when you compare that, you compare that the yin and yang. So you can say Wuji is yin, Tai Chi is yang. But yin itself have yin and yang, yang itself have yin and yang. Now that's get a little bit complicated. Uh, we'll talk about it in the future, but let's distinguish it in Muji. So now I'm going to talk about um, how in our movement in Tai Chi has Muji. So the first movement in Tai Chi is Muji Shi. That means Muji potential to go to Tai Chi. Okay, from Muji have a potential to go into Tai Chi. We can say that's the beginning part of Tai Chi. That's why I call the move beginning Tai Chi. So this is not Wu Ji Si. This is Wu Ji Si. This is the beginning of Tai Chi. We're getting ready. We position ourselves. We wanted to go and do Tai Chi. We want to intend our body to move towards movement <clears throat> to create Tai Chi. Okay. Therefore, the Wu Ji Si is very important. Now, can you just train Wu Ji Si by yourself? Yes. Is it effective? Of course. Is it good for the legs? 
Definitely. Is it good for the body? Of course. Okay. So if you look at a tree, a tree with a strong trunk, that damn tree is Wu Ji Si all the time. Even the leaves are moving, the leaves only move when the wind blow them. If nothing blow them, if you put the tree in the room, it's Wu Ji Si. It's standing tall, standing tall, standing straight in harmony with no distinguish of whatsoever on the side. Just like in the Buckingham Palace in England, in London, you see those, those gods just stand like this, not move. If we go like this, nothing happened, unless you pinch them, you know. It's nothing happened, okay. Maybe some of them, even though you pinch them, I don't think they'll move either. I don't know, I never try. Maybe I get slapped, you know. So anyway, so in Tai Chi, Wu Ji Su means you put your feet apart, about one feet, or a feet and a half, depending on your shoulder. Everything is measured from here to here, from the clavicle, all right? And the toes have to point, you see that? The toes cannot be like that, and the toes cannot be like that. So it has to point straight. So if you look at, let's say, I'm, if you look at that, see, I'm gonna use this as a reference, see that? From this end to this end, it's all straight. So I cannot do that, if I do that, then it's too small, so I go over here. So I just want you to see the distinguish of how you do your wuji si. The chin has to be in. So in other words, the chin has to be in. Okay? So the chin has to be in. Chin in. So don't press it up and not chin out. The chin out, you see that this is curved. The chin has to be in. Imagine somebody is pulling you up here or have a book here so the book doesn't fall. And the shoulder have to relax, cannot be too tight, cannot be like that. So it has to be relaxed, so you can be tight in it and relax. Make sure this chest is soft, make sure the back is round. And you bend your knees to raise your hand. See that? This is how you do the movement. So from here, you bend your knees and raise your hand. This is the beginning of Tai Chi. You know, let's say I'm doing the A movement, and then you turn like that, that's going to Tai Chi. And the buttocks cannot be like that. The buttock has to be tucked in. So you keep a fold here. So that's a fold here. Okay, so in other words, your whole buttock sitting on your heel. You cannot be like that. You're leaning back. You cannot lean forward either. You have to be leaning back. The quad here has to open. Okay, the quad here has to open. So when the quad open, this knee points to the toes, exactly to the toes. Now, do you go all the way? No. The knee doesn't pass the toe. The knee is aligned with the toe or maybe a little bit higher, depend on your strength of your foot, I mean your, your legs. If you're stronger, you can go a little bit lower, but make sure the knee doesn't pass the toe uh, for the purpose of keeping it uh, balance okay if you if your knee past your toe to me I think it's okay if you're younger your legs are stronger it's fine but I still recommend people to stay within that you can just see your toe okay and even though you see more a little bit it's fine depend on your legs as we get older and this quad has a fall here so if you open the quad if you open the quad then this will point and then you stand straight, chin in like this. And then, then the buttocks tuck in and you are in position. So you can practice this at home, just like that, standing like a tree without moving. Like you can just do this, holding the ball, hugging the tree, whatever you want to call it. If you hug the tree, then you're doing this position. If you are attacking someone, you do this position, okay? So the Wu Ji Su is this, that's Wu Ji Su. Then that's beginning of Tai Chi. Okay, so what do you do when you do your Wu Ji Su? What are you thinking? Are you thinking of something? Initially, when you train your Wu Ji Su, of course, you want to make sure that everything is, is good, everything is aligned good, everything is done correctly, and everything become like uh, 
what do you call, uh, okay, I, I need to be, uh, make sure that this is this, this is not too much, it's not like that, it's like that. So, so that, that's the initial stage. And then the chin of tucking, all that, okay. Then once you understand this and you've been doing it, the first thing you need to do, or you can even stand and do ujisu. You don't have to bend your knees. This is ujisu. Okay, for the purpose of practicing just wujisu position, then is this. Okay? Otherwise, you just stand straight. It's fine. That's okay too. So, what is happening in this mindset when you do wujisu? When you do wujisu. Now, when you stand straight, you don't have to straighten up your knee like that. You just naturally stand. So, when you naturally stand, you don't bend. You don't straighten it up, you just like that. Relax. Okay? So, two things you have to put your mind when you do a wujisu. First of all, you have to see 180 degrees here. So, when you stand like this, you're looking in the front, but you should be able to see starting from here. From here to here. You should be able to see. Okay? Can you see the back? Yes, you hear the back. You use your ear to hear the back. So that means you're aware of everything. You see the front, you hear the back. So you're involved 360 degrees. That's the secret in our Wuha. So we're training what? Awareness. We're training awareness. We can hear. The thief is coming in the back door without looking at the thief. That's how good we are. That's why we move softly like a cat, ready to attack him anytime. That's why Wu Yushan and Fauna say, when you move, you move like a cat. Like a cat taking the steps, taking the small steps. So we're listening. We are hearing. We are aware of what's going on. 360 degrees. All right? And we just stand there and relax. If you just want to stand straight, that's fine. But if you want to train a little bit deeper, you bend your knees a little bit, open your quad, so you train how to balance your quad. Make sure this buttock is soft. If you tighten it, see that? See the sound? It's tight. Now it's soft. When it's soft, there's more sound. When it's tight, it's like you're getting a sore throat. Think about being tight and getting a sore throat. So if you relax, you touch your buttock, it's all soft, 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 completely soft except the bones is going down to the ground. How deep do we go? Six feet down. Dead, six feet down. So if the knee are pointing at the toe and you're sitting in the back of your heel, actually you're sitting on your foot, whole foot, but your bottom is pointing at the heel, you go six feet down. That is Wujisu. Wujisu can help you to train how to calm down without movement. Wujisu can without real movement. That's what I mean. Wujisu can train your energy free flow as you are just standing there and be aware of what's going on. And everything drops. Like you can see, everything drops. This Wujisu, everything drops. So everything going back to Mother Nature, going down to the ground. Wujisu can train you how to be rooted, to be grounded. Wujisu can also train you how to get gravitational force. So, so that is a very important part of Wujisu. So don't underestimate Wujisu. Wujisu can do tremendous work. Uh, in one of my lectures in my school, I call it Zhang Zhuang. Zhang Zhuang means standing like a tree or standing posture. I did a lecture in my school two years ago, I think. Uh, I have the video and I probably will load it. I may have loaded it on YouTube already, but you can find them. Or if you're on the Discord channel, you might be able to see him. Zhang Zhuang means standing posture, standing like a tree. And the tree just stand there. No matter how the wind blow, the leaves just move. The trees are straight up and strong like a pillar. Why it doesn't move away? Nothing move unless something really strong will knock them out. Because it's, the roots are down to in the ground. That's why we say Tai Chi, rooted. So in push hands, if you want to move somebody, 
you uproot the person. You don't move him on the top. You don't move the wall. You uproot the bottom of the wall to move him away. That is uh, Su. Okay? Uh, that's all I got to say for this part. So remember to train your Su. Thank you very much. And you have a nice day.